welcome back to our show. You couldn't have planned it any better. Thanks to uh, Heather Moore for putting this all together. Uh, when you Way start go, looking Heather. at yeah. uh, le- we start looking at luxury homes and knickknacks, uh, one thing you got to wonder is well, what does that mean to a, a human body that is now surrounded by electricity, by I, I mean, literally the amount of power that probably some in a day that probably some people didn't see the course of their entire life. A couple hundred years ago, Scott Appert is back with us, who's inspected and provided consulting services for hundreds of homes, commercial spaces and building projects across America with BioHealthy Homes. Scott. Hey, Ben. How's Welcome back, buddy. Yeah, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So, um, man, I just saw you over there <laughs> in the studio, you know, sitting behind uh, Stephen and and it just I just saw you going, oh, man, here we go. So I'm going to what what are we going to do with all these electronics? Well, I, I, I think we're not going to stop the technology, so it's how do you introduce it into the home um, safely and still have a healthy home. It's something that's not going to um, cause you know, health issues. Uh, so uh, introducing the smart technologies, which uh, the, the smart appliances, will all um, the plan is for the, all of them to communicate wirelessly. And so um, introducing more and more wireless technology into the home is, is not necessarily the best way to go about that. Uh, the more that we can hardwire things in so they all communicate, um, you know, through fiber optics or um, CAT6, that's going to be the much better way uh, for um, just for people, you know, their environment. So, Scott, what's the, what, what's the reality of doing these things through real wires. I mean, you know, you talk about the TV talking to the iPad, which is talking to the table, which is talking to the refrigerator, which is telling the milkman to come by the house and bring you some milk. I mean, it really, it sounds great to keep it wired from the safety, uh, you know, a, a healthy perspective. But, you know, I mean, what's the reality of that? The reality is is none of the technologies are being pushed that way. It's uh, the manufacturers are all going with the wireless technology. Because that's what people want. You, well, the people don't, you know, honestly, if it was put out with that option, you know, because there are, you know, they're wiring houses now uh, with Cat 5 and Cat 6, so basically you can have um, an internet access in any, every room of your house. So whether it's they put one of those behind the fridge or not, um, you know, that wouldn't be really much different. Mm-hmm. But it's more... It's just going to like a centralized hub yeah, and then centralized, maybe... Yeah, one wireless connection to your iPad from a centralized hub. Yeah. So it's all possible. And, you know, actually the United States is actually wired with fiber optics. So, they, you know, the technology is there to do this. But it's, it, it's been quicker and cheaper to go with the wireless technology. And that's why it's been pushed. Um, and, you know, it's just it's easier to put up um, a cell phone tower overnight and, you know, do it wirelessly than mm-hmm. having to run the fiber optics from from each tower to each to home. The central into the home. Yeah, sure. So then when you start looking at the health precaution, mean, I, I guess the, the, the things that make you nervous about all of this electricity and all of this wireless, what is it that makes you nervous? Well, the radio waves can affect your body. Basically, it affects your DNA and um, it can affect your brain and it can open up your blood-brain barrier. So there are, um, you know, elements of this that um, can negatively affect your your body. And the more that we're introducing into the home, the home is really should be our our like safe haven from the world. So. Um, you know, keeping it as healthy as possible, keeping out the pesticides and, the, you know, cleaning products that are unhealthy, um, you know, indoor air quality, uh, water quality, um, all these things are really important and to create the healthy home so that when we go out into the world where we're subjected to, you know, things that we can't control, um, it's just important to for the body to have a place to rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what makes, you know, what, what I'm thinking about, of course, is like when we're sleeping, most people don't turn their, you know, wireless off at night. So, the you know, the best thing to do is definitely to turn your Wi-Fi off at night so you, you're, you're creating a, um, an, an environment where your body can relax. Because mm-hmm. it's basically, uh, you know, in a sense, assaulting the body where the, the radio waves... Your body feels, you know, in a sense, and and so they, your body needs to rejuvenate when it's sleeping. I mean, in some ways, this is what people worried about many years ago, which, uh, like, living under telephone wires. I mean, they emit yep. electricity, they emit radio waves. Now you have 
ones that aren't buzzing, but they're everywhere. Yeah. Well, so it's just different frequencies. So the, we all know that you know high-tension power lines have magnetic fields coming off, and it's not good to, to live near them. You know, there's lots of studies that show magnetic fields, you know, at high levels can cause cancer, those kind of things. So the radio waves are just a higher frequency, you know, and um, they also, um, they're just permeating, but we don't hear them. They're not buzzing and we don't see them. So, um, you know, the fact that they just keep adding the more technologies because uh, of uh, the bandwidth that we need to download movies and and email and talk all at the same time. <laughs> While texting. <laughs> While texting and driving. <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, and, you know, even having in your cars the, the Bluetooth and everything so we can talk and drive, but we're just being blasted. So if somebody, you know, I know this is something that you do, and I, I want to make sure we get this, that there, there are, you'll go into people's houses. Yes. And point out the areas, which I think for, you know, with, uh, with Stephen and Ramona, I mean, some of these, re these really high-tech houses, that would be interesting to show a potential buyer, like, hey, look, you know, I get it, it's cool, but let's just make sure you have an idea of what this really does or, you know, how this is maybe affects your your human, your, your body, your health. Um, because I don't know that necessarily people wouldn't buy the house because no. of it, but I know you also have strategies yes. to go, okay, look, let's just let's just make the, the bedroom a place where you're not going to get blasted with you know, with, uh, with with radio waves all night long. You know, yeah. there, there's certain strategies I know that you've come up with. Yeah, that's the, the key. We're not going to stop the technology or, um, you know, the environment, but it's how do we do it smartly um, and how do we create that healthy space? You know, I was just in a home recently and, and uh, somebody had their child's bed up against a wall that the, the electrical uh, meter was outside the wall. You know, and then they discovered through research and stuff that this could, you know, this could be bad. And so it went out. Uh, and certainly it's just the more we know, the more we just need to pay attention to and be intentional about creating a healthy space. Um, having wireless in our homes is, is uh, you know, it's, most people do. But how do we um, create that? You know, the Wi-Fi router shouldn't be next to your bed or the kid's bed or you know, it's it's how the strategies of how to create this healthiest home as we can without losing the functionality well, sure. that everybody yeah. wants yeah. and and quote you know people can't see my rabbit ears but needs yeah uh, and so the mitigation you yeah. know uh, suggestions is is there's lots of options to to make things healthy yeah Scott uh, we just have a couple minutes left but uh, you know you also brought up this one point which is another piece of uh, something people don't necessarily see. Uh, which is water quality coming yeah. into their home. Now, this doesn't have as much to do with technology, no. but you were doing some research on water quality in homes, and we're not. I mean, it doesn't matter if it comes through your faucet or goes through your fridge. It's really the same water. Yeah. Talk a little bit about that. And again, we just have about a minute or a minute right. and a half left. Well, I would just to make it real quick. I would suggest having um, a water filter, and I we I recommend a reverse osmosis water filter because what is in the water. Um, you know, there's a lot of aspects of the stuff in the water. So we want to make sure the water you, you drink and, you know, it's important to drink a lot of water because your body, um, you know, functions with water. If it doesn't, you don't have enough water intake, uh, then your body doesn't function properly. So it really having filtered water and, you know, drinking bottled water is really not a great idea. Uh, most of it's in plastic and, uh, you know, the carbon footprint from all the bottled water, even though it's cheap, you know, it's got to be shipped and, um, stored and um, so really the bottom and then line it goes is, into that big thing the size of Texas in the middle of the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So having a filtered, good quality filtered water for cooking and drinking, I think, is just the most important thing. And I mean that. Uh, and then the other one, I guess, was fluoride. I mean, people don't realize, but the fluoride in the water is really like this kind of crazy old story. <laughs> it is, and I don't necessarily want to get into that. But the you know having chlorine also. In fact. Uh, Having a shower filter, if you, if you don't have a whole house filtered, having a shower head filter um, is really important so your body doesn't absorb all the chlorine. Mm -hmm. You actually absorb a lot more chlorine uh, taking a shower than drinking a glass of water. Really? Because, yeah, your skin and the pores in the shower open up, so you absorb through your pores a lot more um, chlorine than just drinking so, a couple of So not of water. only do we need to watch out for the electronics, but, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, we need to look out for the water. Well, yeah. it's, it's good. It's good to know. These are the <laughs> things that nobody talks about. That I mean, yeah. they're really true. You know, yeah. um, 
And that water filter, I mean, I imagine you can get one for your whole house. Oh, yeah. And it lasts a year or two. I don't know how long they oh, yeah. last, but it lasts plenty of time. Generally you... about five years if you're doing a whole house. If you're doing a point of use, like under your sink, you can just have a little separate faucet. Um, they last about a year. Man. And it's pretty cheap to I, I, I got a lot of work to do at my house. <laughs> Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Stick around for a few minutes. Right. We'll continue Thank the you. conversation. You're listening to Brashonomics. <laughs> 